Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, certainly give God praise for another day uh, that we have not seen before. Another day that we can share uh, in the word of the Lord. Uh, the last Tuesday of 2022, I certainly give God praise uh, for bringing us uh, thus far. Uh, I hope that and pray that everyone had a wonderful, a wonderful Christmas, uh, that it was uh, as relaxing or as hectic as you wanted it to be. Uh, but I certainly give God praise uh, for being born. Uh, I, I watched a few sermons uh, <clears throat> over over my little break from work, and, and uh, uh, I love the fact that so many of the preachers would say it doesn't matter uh, what day it was that we celebrate as long as he he was born. That's 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 the key. <clears throat> Excuse me. I certainly give God praise um, for his presence, for his spirit. Uh, I give God praise uh, for all that he has done in my life. He certainly has been good to me over 2022. Um, so many things have happened, uh, but the Lord kept us. And I'm so thankful uh, that he kept us. I certainly give God praise for his spirit, <clears throat> his loving kindness. His tender mercies, I give God praise for each and every one of you. Um, <clears throat> I certainly do love you with the love of the Lord. I, I, I do this, um, and, and my pastor uh, asked me, I think it was almost two years ago now, he asked me uh, uh, to um, uh, consider doing something like this, and I give God praise because it certainly has been a blessing to me. So again, I say I give God praise for good leadership. I certainly honor uh, my pastor, Bishop, uh, J.O. Rasul, uh, to Lady Rasul, uh, his help meet. I certainly give God praise for them. To uh, my teammates at the New Liberty Apostolic Faith Church, I give God praise for them. Uh, wonderful, wonderful men and women of God. Uh, and certainly to my lady, uh, Lady GT2, I give God praise uh, for her. Tonight, uh, I um, uh, will, will, will try to do this as quickly and expeditiously as I can. Uh, uh, the Lord uh, gave me the thought uh, to end this last moment in scripture of this year. Uh, God bless you, uh, Sister Mullen. Um, the last of this year uh, with the thought, it's irreversible. It's irreversible. It's irreversible. Um, uh, one of the things I was talking to the to, to pastor, we were texting earlier and, and it blessed me because, you know, one of the things that I love about the Lord is that um, there are times where I don't have to ask for a word. He will he will just give it. Um, and when you read scripture, uh, there's so many places where you'll find where it says the word of the Lord came to somebody. Uh, and I give God praise because this came to me, um, I want to say yesterday morning uh, and not not looking for it. But I give God praise for again for his goodness. So if you will go with me to the scriptures, uh, uh, those that come on. Uh, I appreciate you again for those that like and share. Um, Numbers chapter number 23, verses 18 through 20. Very familiar passage of scripture, but I believe that the Lord would have something for us in this, in this area. Uh, the Bible says, again, Numbers chapter number 23, verses 18 through 20. And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. And he hath blessed. And I cannot reverse it. Uh, I, I give God praise for, for his great and powerful word. So looking at this, uh, this is a very familiar story uh, in the history of the children of Israel uh, as they were moving uh, from the life that they had in Egypt. And it, it's in chapter number uh, 21 of Numbers where you'll find uh, more of the context uh, of what is happening here. Uh, the children of Israel uh, have defeated uh, Sihon. 
uh, who was king of the Amorites. Uh, they simply wanted to go through his territory. Uh, he decided to come against them, but he didn't know who was behind them uh, when he decided to come against them. And then there was Og of Bashan. He was, he was a king uh, there, and, and the same, he suffered the same fate as, as Sihon. And so here uh, we have Balak, and he is looking at these people, and he wants, he wants to do something about about them. God bless you, uh, uh, Mama Winston and, and Sister Towers. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, and so uh, the first thing I want to do is talk about that word reverse. Reverse in Hebrew means to return or to turn back, to return or to turn back. And the definition in the Webster of irreversible means not able to be undone or altered, not able to be undone or alter. That's the definition of irreversible. So for the first thing I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that I appreciate is that scripture that says, for I am the Lord and I change not. Uh, I, I didn't know it and I didn't understand it as much until uh, the Lord gave me something earlier this year to teach about it, that it's a blessing that our God does not change. It is a blessing that he's always the same. He's he's always God. As a matter of fact, he goes as far to say that that beside me, there is no savior. And he says that beside me, I, I have no equal. There's nobody else uh, like God. And one of the things that I appreciate about that is that anything and everything that God has created uh, does not fully understand God. Uh, uh, everything from the, from the angels in heaven, everything does not understand the full breadth of who God is. There, there, there is nobody that can say they know everything about God. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you have you have walked with the Lord. Nobody knows everything uh, about God. The Bible even goes on to say for those that, that like to go and, and look at those scriptures, it talks about in Revelation that he has a name that nobody even knows. He has he has a name for himself that he reserved for himself. And it, it is such a beautiful thing to know that our God is so great uh, uh, and there is nobody like him. But when we look, when we look in the book of Numbers and in chapter uh, number 22, verses four through six, you will find uh, uh, the situation that Balak found himself in. The Bible says in verse number four, and Moab said unto the elders of Midian, he got his people together. Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, talking about the children of Israel as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. And the Bible says he sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, uh, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people to call him saying, behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I drive them out of the land for I want or for I know uh, that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. The first thing I recognize looking at this scripture is Balaam was somebody that had a reputation. Balaam had a reputation for blessing and cursing people, and whatever he said would come to pass. Balaam had 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 a reputation. But what you will find here, and I thought this was very interesting, when you go down to verse number seven, the Bible says, and the elders of of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination. In other words, they had their money in their hand to go see Balaam. And the Bible said, and when they came unto Balaam and spake unto him the words of Balak, and he said unto them, lodge here this night. This is Balaam talking, and I will bring you word again as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam and said, what men are these with thee? And the Bible says, and Balaam said unto God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent unto me saying behold there is a people come out of Egypt which covered the face of the earth come now curse me them peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out and God said unto Balaam after he gives him uh, what Balak has sent the, 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 the Moabite elders uh, to express to him God says to Balaam thou shall not go with them thou shall not curse this people for they are blessed. 
they are blessed. One of the things that I found to be such a tremendous blessing is that there are some things that God says, and it is simply what he said. It's simply what his will is. But then there are other things that he says that are conditional. There are other things that he expresses to us that are conditional. The Bible will let us know a very familiar uh, chapter, uh, Deuteronomy 28, verses number one. You remember the Bible says, and it shall come to pass if, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Notice here that the Bible is letting us know that if you hearken uh, to the voice of the Lord thy God, and if you observe to do all his commandments, that you as a nation will be above all the nations of the earth. There was there was a condition uh, uh, to be above the nations of the earth. You had to you had to hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. And then further down in that chapter, and I know people don't like to talk about it, but further down in that chapter, in verse number 15, the Bible says, but it shall also come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that that all the curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So understand, these are conditions that God was giving the children of Israel, conditions to what the outcome would be. There were conditions, and you remember, it is in Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verses 12 through 14. I promise you I'm going somewhere. The Bible will let us know that the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. And then he says, if I shut up heaven, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And notice here, he's saying, if, if, if I shut up heaven, I will hear my people if they would humble themselves. So let me just stop here for a moment and remind somebody that one of the greatest positions to be in, in God, is in a position of humility. One of the best positions to be in, in God, is somebody who is not high-minded or somebody who's so worried about who you are and you are more concerned about who your God is. I, 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 I get concerned when people can talk about themselves all the time. I have accomplished this and, and I have accomplished that. You can't accomplish anything without God because whatever wisdom or whatever gift that you that it is that you have, you have to know that that gift came from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above our Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. But one of the things that I appreciate Appreciated about this is that there are some things that are conditional. There are some things that require you to do something for God to do something. There are some things that are required of us so that God would get the glory out of our lives. But then, brothers and sisters, I'm excited to tell you there are other things that God will do simply because it is his will. There are some things that God will do simply because that's what God decided to do. Aren't you glad that nobody can stay his hand or say, what doest thou? Aren't you glad that God can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it? This is why it's so important, brothers and sisters, that we don't put him in a box, because in a box he can only operate a certain way. I want my God out of the box to be as big as he is. This is why I love when Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. What she was saying was, I'm making my God bigger than everything else that I am going through. I am making my God larger than everything else that I am facing. Why am I making him larger? Because the Bible says that heaven is his throne. Thank you, Jesus. And the earth is his footstool. Our God, our God is bigger. Our God is bigger. But you will find 
that in his perfect will, there are some things that cannot be altered when it is in the perfect will of God. And this is what the Lord showed me in this. You remember, you remember, you remember when Balaam, uh, the Lord had told him, don't go with these men unless, unless they call for you. And, and Balaam decided, now remember, you have to understand that Balaam was a man that had a reputation for blessing and cursing. So he decided the next day that he was going to go with the men, regardless of whether or not they called him. But notice, 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 it is in Numbers chapter number 22, verse number 31 through 35. The Bible will remind us uh, when Balaam was headed on his journey. You remember that he was riding his donkey or his ass. And you remember that his donkey saw the angel of the Lord with his sword drawn. And you remember when he had his sword drawn, Balaam couldn't see it. And he began to beat the donkey. But this was the thing uh, uh, that got me. This was the thing that got me. The, the, he did not have a reaction. The Bible never said says that he had a reaction to the fact that the donkey began to talk. The Bible doesn't say that he was amazed or astonished at the fact that the donkey began to talk. Think about this for a moment. Because the donkey opened his mouth the Bible doesn't say that he was surprised. The Bible doesn't say that there was there was, there, was, there was any excitement in the fact that, that he began to talk. There, there was no excitement in the fact that this donkey that he had been riding for, for obviously for some time uh, began to talk. But notice, 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 when you are not uh, in the will of God, he will open your eyes sometimes so you can see something. The Bible lets us know in verse number 31, on a chapter 22 of Numbers, the Bible says, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam. Uh, which somebody would say, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see. He opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in his way and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. Notice that when the donkey began to talk, he had no reaction. It, it wasn't a big thing to him. But all oh, when he saw the angel of the Lord with a sword drawn in his hand, it caused him to fall on his his face. And that's what I want to stop and tell somebody. Sometimes, sometimes you need your eyes open. Sometimes we get the big head and we begin to think that we are somebody. But I am so glad that the Lord opened my eyes to show me how frail that I am. He opened my eyes to show me how many things have I kept you from. Aren't you glad that he'll open your eyes sometimes to show you things that you did not see? I believe, brother, Brothers and sisters, there would be a praise even now among his people if we stop for a moment to think of what God kept us from. If he opened your eyes, thank you, Jesus, to show you the things that he manipulated in his will to, to, to make it to where you weren't hurt. To, to, that he manipulated in his will to make sure that you made it to this place here and now. I give my God praise. And the Bible Bible. The Bible lets us know that now, now he understood that he has made an error. He understood that he made an error. When he understood that he made an error, he says to himself, he says to the Lord, rather uh, to the angel, he says, listen, if you don't want me to go, I'm not going to go now. And the Lord, I got to stop here for just a minute. And this is, this is, this is verse number 34. Uh, and Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord of chapter 22 of Numbers, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with the men, but only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that shalt thou speak. So Balaam went with the princess of Balak. Now, now, now understand the reason why God at this point was okay with him going. Understand this brothers and sisters is because now he understood that whatever the Lord gives me to say, if I don't say it, it could cost me my life. So let me just stop here and pick on any preachers or any teachers that are on the line. If you ever wanted to understand why it's important to study the word and to 
rightly divided. The Bible will remind us in Revelation chapter number 22 verses 18 and 19. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add the plagues that are written in this book. Thank you, Jesus. And if any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. Brothers and sisters, take it seriously whenever you have a word from the Lord. Take it seriously whenever God gives you something to deliver to his people. It is nothing to play with. Had Balaam not done what God had said, it would have cost him his life. The Bible, I got to move on here. The Bible, I got to move. The Bible will let us know. And I'm going to wrap up here. The Bible says in Numbers chapter number 23, Numbers chapter number 23, I don't have time to read it all, but I want to show you something real quick. The Bible says, and Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And what the Lord started to show me is we understand that that number seven, Thank you, Jesus, is the number that means divine fullness and perfection and completeness. So this is where the Lord is showing us that his perfect will is involved in what is happening here. His perfect will is involved because there were seven altars that had to be put together. And there was a sacrifice that had to be laid on the altar. Remember, God's declaration to Balaam was that the people are blessed. You can't curse them because the people are blessed. But then as I kept as I kept reading here, you remember, you remember he he gave him a blessing at the first spot. So so Balak and his, his earthly, his man's wisdom, he said, well, let me take you to another spot, Balaam. Let me take you to another spot that's high and above the people and you can curse them. You can curse them there. And you remember the Bible said this is around verse number 13 through 17. The Bible would say that he had him again bring seven. Seven altars and a ram on every altar. In other words, what the Lord was showing us is that his perfect will was not changing. His perfect will was not adjusting the same perfection the first time you attempted to curse them, Balak, is the same perfection that's even now as you go to a different spot. And mind you, let me just throw this in. <clears throat> let me just throw this in. The children of Israel were oblivious to what was going on. They had no idea that somebody was trying to curse them. Brothers and sisters, you may have no idea, but I'm so glad that the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. We know, we know that our God is everywhere at the same time. But I have to stop here for a minute to remind somebody that while Balak wanted to curse, <clears throat> excuse me, while Balak wanted to curse the children of Israel. May I remind you that that wasn't the only place in scripture where somebody wanted to curse God's creation. It is not the only point in scripture where, where somebody wanted to curse what God had blessed. And you remember it is in Genesis the first book uh, of the Pentateuch, of those first five books, the Bible will remind us that, that here you have Adam and Eve, and they, you know the story, they make the mistake in the garden of eating of the fruit that they should not have been touching. But then it's around the 12th chapter of Genesis. Verse number three, the Bible reminds us, and I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So here again, we see that a curse uh, uh, was pronounced among mankind, but here is our God saying to Abram that in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. It seemed like an oxymoron because we know that there is a curse uh, uh, across mankind and yet we have a holy God that is saying that there is a blessing. 
Thank you, Jesus, that there is a blessing. I may need five more minutes tonight, but the Bible, the Bible will let us know that that uh, uh, situation in numbers is not the only place uh, uh, where someone tried to curse mankind. But what I'm so glad about is when I began to search the scriptures, I'm reminded in Galatians chapter number three, verses 13 and 14, and I'm just about out the way. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree why did he hang on a tree and this excited my soul the Bible says that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith oh notice here notice here there was a curse that was pronounced on mankind. There was a curse that was pronounced on what God had created. And yet a holy God on his throne said that there is a blessing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the perfect sacrifice. So what we're seeing in numbers is only a shadow of what happened in the New Testament. They had to take seven altars to make that perfect number and even through that perfect seven it took one Jesus to break the curse of the law because in Jesus, Jesus brothers and sisters, thank you Lord was a representation of the ark of God, he was a representation of the ark of the covenant meaning it was built with it was built with wood that would not decay and covered over in gold and on top of it was the mercy seat where Moses could then commune with God. I'm so glad we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet, thank you Lord, yet without, yet without sin. The Bible lets us know. In Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared me. Aren't you glad that when the curse was pronounced over you, there was a holy God that was pronouncing a blessing over you? Aren't you glad that your life was supposed to be destroyed but there was a God that was behind the scenes before you knew who he was. There was a God behind the scenes that said they are blessed. And what's even better, what I love that Balaam said, the Bible reveals to us that he could bless and curse. But the Bible lets us know that when Balaam was talking to Balak, he said, behold, I have received commandment. Oh God, commandment from a holy God, I receive commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. I can't turn it back into what it was. Aren't you glad that the work of the cross cannot be reversed? Let me let you in on a secret, brothers and sisters. If Satan could go back over 2,000 years to Calvary, he would have made sure that that Jesus was not killed. He would have made sure that there was no blood. But the Bible lets us know that he came for one purpose. To save his people from their sins. So Satan and hell and every other demonic spirit has to understand that God is not going to reverse the blessing. The blood that was shed is not going back into Jesus. 
Jesus' veins, the blood that was shed is still flowing. It still reaches, thank you, Lord, to the highest mountain. It still flows to the lowest valley, the blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. I got to move on, brothers and sisters. He cannot reverse it. I got to give you one more scripture to show you that he cannot reverse it. The Bible says it like this in Colossians chapter number 2, verses 14 through 15. The Bible said he blotted out, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross, nailed it to his cross. Aren't you glad that everything that would try to curse you, thank you, Lord, has been nailed to the cross? Aren't you glad that everything that would try to destroy you has been nailed to the cross? I'm so glad that every issue that we have has been nailed to the cross. So what he did when he nailed it, what he did when he nailed it, the Bible said and he spoiled principalities and powers and made a show of them openly. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that when they pronounced the curse, God made a show of them openly because you're still here. You're still standing. God is still keeping you. God is still holding you. You're blessed, brothers and sisters, as we get ready to go in 2023, God simply wanted me to remind somebody that you are blessed and the enemy, the devils in hell cannot reverse what God has decreed. This is not an if then type of option. What he gave us was his will. His will is that you are blessed. But remember, brothers and sisters, blessing does not mean that you don't have trouble. Blessing does not mean that you don't have challenges, but this is what I love about it. The fact that God said you are blessed. The fact that God said it can't be reversed. So in other words, no matter what you look like right now, it can't be reversed. The blessing that was spoken over you cannot, cannot be reversed. It's irreversible, brothers and sisters. It's irreversible. As much as Satan wants to destroy all of the people of God, what God has done and what God has decreed, it's irreversible. I will leave you with this. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate y'all. Give me a little more time. I'll leave you with this. Numbers chapter number 23. Numbers chapter number 23, verses 21 to 23. The Bible, the Bible reads like this. He had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither had he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. And this is what he says. If that is not enough to grab you there, he says, surely there is no enchantment <laughs> against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to the time it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Aren't you glad that no matter how much hell you've gone through, you are still blessed and you can stand where you are and say, what had God wrought? We are only here because God wrought a blessing and spoke a blessing in our lives. The Bible says in one place, the word of the Lord is tried. I'm so glad that we had experience where we could try what it is that the Lord said to see whether or not it would come to pass. I wish, I wish in our finite minds we would write down some of the prayers that we prayed. 
I think you would be surprised how many things came to pass. I think you would be surprised how many things that the Lord spoke that you forgot about that came to pass. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Be encouraged. What God has done for us is irreversible. <laughs> Ooh, it's irreversible. I love how Balaam said it. He commanded a blessing and I, I can't reverse it. I can't change what God has done. There are a whole lot of people that may not be happy that you're blessed. There's a whole lot of people that may have an attitude because God uses you or whatever gift that you have. They may have an attitude because they're wondering why they can't do what you do. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No matter how mad they get, no matter how much they try to curse you, God has pronounced you blessed. If there was any question in anybody's mind about how God feels about his people, here is a people that were murmuring and complaining. Here is a people that were sinners just like us. Here was a people that didn't do everything right just like us. And behind the scenes, God called them blessed. I'm so appreciative of all the years that God kept us even before we knew who he was. Because he pronounced you blessed. But what he did after pronouncing you blessed, he didn't call you blessed to see what would happen. He guaranteed your triumph. But thanks be to God that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. How did he give us the victory? He nailed all of our stuff, all of our sins to a cross. So he can make an open shame of those that are trying to curse you. So be encouraged. I'm over my time. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Be encouraged. It's irreversible. <laughs> they may say you're a nobody, but it's irreversible. The blessing spoken on you is irreversible. I give God praise for his goodness. If the Lord says the same, I will see you in 2023 uh, with another moment in scripture. And Lord willing, I'll also be able to be on YouTube as well. Uh, at the same time, but I give God praise for each and every one of you. God bless you. I hope something was said that would encourage you, that would strengthen you. Just know that you're blessed. You may not feel it, but you're still blessed because he's spoken over you. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends as we go into a new year. But look, brothers and sisters, look, get ready to stand. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Get ready to stand and say, look what God wrought. <laughs> Look at what the Lord has done. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord.